So we wanted to get out this weekend, but I only had one day that we can make it work. So living in Virginia, we went right down the street to First Landing State Park. <laughs> So First Landing State Park was actually the first Virginia State Park. They started construction in 1930, ended in 1936. Initially, it wasn't even called First Landing. It was called Seashore State Park. And that's because it was the park by the shore, just like Shenandoah was first named Park in the Mountains, later changed to Shenandoah. They opened the park in 1936 under Jim Crow laws. Jim Crow laws basically means that they were able to segregate the park. So you had unequal facilities for coloreds and whites. So in 1955, you had the Supreme Court ruling of Brown versus the Board of Education. Out of that decision, Seashore State Park was given the choice to whether integrate or shut down. So instead of integrating, they closed. For 10 years. In 1965, and the Civil Rights Act came out, they reopened the park, fully integrated, everything was good to go. Good job. After that, in 1977, they decided to rename Seashore State Park to First Landing State Park. They did this for the commemoration of the 400th anniversary of the settlement of Jamestown. Because in 1607, they landed here. Not here, like over, over there. Christopher Newport captained three ships, the England, the Discovery, and the Susan Constant. And then they headed to Jamestown after that. What's really cool though, is a hundred years after that, Captain Edward J. Teach, AKA Blackbeard, was here. It was here in this park, in this area, in this bay. And this was a very well-known bay for pirates because they were able to see merchant ships. The waters were a little calmer. So one day, Blackbeard sacked this merchant ship. Right after they sacked this ship, they saw the US Navy. So Blackbeard came on shore, buried his treasure, and then hightailed it down to North Carolina. Of course, the Navy finally caught up to them, and then there was a bloody battle that ensued. And at the end of it, Blackbeard was beheaded. With his treasure still here somewhere, legend has it that when he died, his spirit came back to this spot to protect his treasure, the thing that was most important to him. this place is pretty cool. They have about 200 different campsites that include power, no power, tent only, and what we're in right now, which is technically a group. I tried to schedule a spot basically the day before, and that wasn't happening. Luckily, I was able to call the desk, and one of the rangers was able to get me in to a group spot, which they're not technically supposed to do if you're only a one person, but they did it for me, which is awesome downfall it's right next to the highway all day we've been hearing that 
Thor. Up. Up. I'm excited for tomorrow though. Tomorrow we're gonna go on the hike and they have about 20 miles of trails. And I think we're gonna try to do the Cape Henry loop, which is the longest one. It's about six miles. We're gonna we're gonna feel out the dogs and see how they can do it because they're not they're not hiking dogs. Say hi, my love. Hey. So we just finished up, ended up being over five miles still, uh, but we didn't do the Cape Henry loop. We actually, we went from Cape Henry to King Fisher to, I don't know, I'll put it somewhere for you to see, but it was a good hike uh, and honestly probably a little bit too much for the dog. So thankfully I got the, the water tank up on the truck. <laughs> so I gave him some water as soon as we got back and they are tuckered out, ready to go. So I'm gonna get him home.